And so eventually you're going to get to computerized government. And that's for the end of corruption. Because they don't have ambition. Computers don't say, I'd like to be president of the world. I want to control people. They don't have a gut reaction. If utilized in this global systems approach, we could surpass the practice of political decisions based on power and advantage. And even computer experts are writing books now on the machine takeover. Watch out. They're not going to take over. They're going to be assigned to decision making. I'm not worried about the machines getting angry and taking over. I'm worrying about people maybe getting angry if we don't figure out an equitable way to use these technologies to create shared prosperity. The Venus Project proposes ways to achieve this. Interconnected, sustainable cities utilize cyber centers, which coordinate industries, transportation systems, public health care, and the flow of goods and services. These cybernated centers would connect all cities and help with environmental reclamation. In the beginning, interdisciplinary technical teams would manage productivity until even these tasks are automated. Mega machines directed by AI could excavate canals, construct bridges, viaducts, and dams. Self-erecting structures would be expedient in the construction of industrial plants, apartments, and eventually most of the global infrastructure. We study all the negative effects before we build anything. So there's a whole group of engineers and computers doing long-term studies of all the negative retroaction. With the threat of climate change, we may be forced to take large engineering feats. The Venus Project proposes automated canal diggers to bring rising seawaters into below sea level deserts, enabling them to bloom. The cities would only use clean sources of energy. Some say this is not possible, but even today, Professor Mark Jacobson is demonstrating otherwise. So our goal is to replace all fossil fuels. There's 30 times more solar available worldwide over land and high solar locations than we need to power the entire world for all purposes in 2030. And there's seven times more wind than you need to do the same thing. So we are looking to combine all clean renewable energy sources that are available, wind, solar power, geothermal power, hydroelectric tidal power and wave power. We would need about four million large wind turbines to power 50% of the entire world for all purposes. You might say, well, that sounds like a lot. But keep in mind, during World War II, the world produced about 800,000 aircraft in the space of five to six years, and the U.S. produced 330,000 aircraft in four to five years. And so that was decades ago, and now we have better technologies and abilities to ramp up production. So it really comes down to willpower. It's not a technological or economic blockade to solving this problem. It's really a social and political blockade. The first city would be a testing ground for the implementation and further development of these social aims. The first city would be a huge research center, making automated systems for the next city, making the first city better as well. It would be a place where we would disseminate information, we'd have movie studios, we'd be making gaming, computer animation, a lot of different media to get to the public. It would be like a university city. We would have instructions as to what sustainability really means for the future. The cities of the future are circular, not because I like circles. It's because you only have to design one segment of the system and then reproduce it in pie-shaped sectors, and that would be the most economical way. When you build suburbia, it's spread out, and you have to travel one way to the dentist, 
the other way for shopping, another way to the doctor. The system is self-contained. There are wind generators. All the rooftops are solar generated. All of the garbage and waste is recycled under the ground, underneath these roadways. All of the roadways contain piping running up and back. And we use all that hot water to operate the air conditioning and the needs of the city. Now these are where the residential district is. If you work in the medical center, you can live here if you choose to. So this is essentially a collection of variations in houses. Your house will vary to suit your needs. Fresco's designs are a showcase for the harmonious coexistence of nature and technology. Now some people don't like living in individual houses. They prefer living in apartments. This is a gymnasium, drama group, discussion group, recreation of all kinds. So the skyscraper in the future will offer more of the amenities. So this is your recreational belt. There'd be art centers, music centers, recreational areas. These are bicycle paths. There are tennis courts, and these are golf courses. But the golf courses contain a clubhouse with all the golf clubs. So you don't have to bring anything out to the golf course. You stay there, play golf. When you're through, you leave your clubs there. These are access buildings where anyone can access books, a violin, musical instrument. Anything that they want is free and available. These are your research centers. Everything studied in these areas is to improve your standard of living and everybody else there. There would be no lawyers, no bankers, no ad agencies, no insurance people, no sales people. Without money, you don't need any of those things. So you could go right into solving the problems that all of us have. That's what we'd be working on. Today, we're fighting over people who have different values and we're fighting over scarce resources. In the future, you won't have to do that. You'd be working cooperatively to improve the standard of living for everyone. A lot of people think that I want to give people things for nothing and that's going to spoil people. The fact that you're born in America, you have nothing to do with the airplane, the telephone, the railways, it's all here and you're lucky because you inherited that, just being born here, that doesn't spoil you. So there's really no basis for crime since anyone can access anything they need. No one's going to hit you on your head and take your wallet because there's no money in it anymore. The monetary system has been surpassed. And when we have that kind of abundance economy, most of us will be able to spend most of our time doing the things we enjoy doing. The kinds of things that you might have seen the Athenians do during their golden age. They had human slaves take care of their basic needs. We can do it with robots. Amazing. And what would you suggest the cooks and housewives of the world do with all that extra time. There's an island called Isle of Man. On that island, there's a stream down below, and the women wear a harness, and they go down and get two buckets of water and climb up to their home up there where they boil and cook food. The women have to skin animals and, and get the animal fat out to operate their lamps. And if someone said to the women, Someday you'll turn a gadget and water will flow at whatever speed you want without you having going down to the river. And someday you'll press a button and the lights will go on. And you won't have to skin animal fat. And the woman says, yes, but what will women do? People will get engaged in how to live, how to relate, to travel, scuba diving, restoring the reefs of the oceans that we damaged cleaning the ocean and the atmosphere. So much we don't know. And you go back to school free of charge and every city will be a university city where you're updated on what's new. We would re-examine everything from our social arrangements, 
and building processes to our value system. Let's explore how this new social concept would work within a resource-based economy. It's not just architecture. It's a way of thinking. We still have neural lag. It's hard for us to step into the future without dragging some of the past. We won't make the history books of the future. We are that ignorant. Not in technology. We're doing fine in computers, electronics, but the human value system is not moving fast enough. I would say that people would be much more productive, much more humane, much happier people. That is the question. Will people be happier with new technology? No, not new technology alone, but with a value system and new technology. In many instances, we ask people for their opinion. Do you think man will ever get to the moon? They may say, maybe 10,000 years from now. Instead of saying, I don't know enough about that to give you a, a sensible answer. That's the way you talk. But they have opinions about everything. There'll always be war, there always has been war, because man is greedy. That's what a repeat or a loop of what they've heard in the past. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed is good. Greed is right. Greed works. People are reinforced in this culture to be greedy. The more you have, the more you abuse other people. In order to get what you have, you're looked upon as being successful. You admire the people with money that have those things. And they usually get it off other people's backs that they abuse terribly. So you're not born being greedy. People think that you can't change human nature. If you couldn't change it, we'd still be living in caves. So obviously we're undergoing change. So human nature is not fixed. And greed is brought about by scarcity or lack of resources. Well, there are some animals that are very docile. The cows on the next field, they wouldn't hurt each other at all. But when we approach them with oranges, because there's a scarcity of oranges, they start bucking each other. So it's really a matter of scarcity. What the Venus Project is trying to do is eliminate scarcity and produce abundance. And for the first time in history, we can do that because we have the technology to be able to supply people with whatever they need. Some people believe that there's such a thing as human intelligence. Remember that an intelligent electrical engineer of 75 years ago could not get a job today. So what you once called intelligent was intelligent at that time within that frame of reference. It's an ongoing process. Now, what is the real meaning of intelligence? The ability to extract significant information from any situation. I would say it depends on the next 20 years. We'll know whether there's intelligent life on Earth. Depends on what we do about the environment and what we do about the human problem. Poverty, hunger in the world, sickness, and waste of resources. If we learn how to manage the Earth's resources intelligently, we can overcome most of the problems in relatively short time.